our next um, testifier. So we're going to, if I have my order correct, we're going to round out the program now with uh, three last testimonies. The one is the, in the program and the other two we're uh, bringing to the end from earlier in the program. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, our next testimony will be from uh, on Indonesia from Nadia uh, Marina Co Connolly Williams. She is Director of Communications Veterans for Peace, San Francisco Chapter 69, and Board Member Veterans for Peace, Vietnam. And uh, we used to have a desk almost next to each other at Global Exchange. So thank you very much for the testimony that Emily is going to put on. Our next testimony for the Cold War Truth Commission will be from Nadia Connolly Williams. She is Tr Communications Director for the San Francisco Chapter of Veterans for Peace. Welcome, Nadia. My name is Nadia Connolly Williams, and I'm here to give testimony about my father's early death at the age of 57 and how this is linked to the CIA backed coup in Indonesia in 1965 and 66. I'm a freelance journalist living in San Francisco, and I'm a board member of several anti-war and pro-conservation organizations. My father and mother met while in their 20s at a Marxist study group in Berkeley, California in 1934 in the depths of the depression. Their families personally experienced the brutal collapse of global capitalism. And like many disillusioned young people, they joined the American Communist Party. Later with World War II, the Soviet Union's defeat of Nazism increased their admiration of socialism. Both my parents were teachers. My mother it was in the grammar school system. My father, Douglas Connolly, taught architecture and engineering at a two-year college in San Francisco's East Bay in a low-income community of color, specifically wanting to serve the young people who lived there. He was active in the teachers union and in the racial integration of the college's faculty and surrounding white suburbs. However, a nationwide atmosphere of fear was building in the 1950s with the McCarthy hearings, witch hunts targeting so-called subversives. In 1957, my father signed up for a two-year professor exchange program with Indonesia at the University of Bandung. My mother, brother, and I were going to join him for the second year. The exchange program was administered by the University of Kentucky in Lexington, which we later learned was staffed with CIA agents. My father admired Indonesia because the democratically elected government led by President Sukarno was genuinely benefiting the, minority of, the majority of the population. The large Indonesian Communist Party there also headed up the democratic reforms. Sukarno was a prominent leader in the Third World Non-Aligned Movement, hosting the seminal Bandung Conference of 1955. My father arrived in Bandung University in August of 1957. However, after less than two weeks there, U.S. agents detained him and ordered him to return to the States. Contract canceled. The following year, in early 1958, the CIA sponsored an unsuccessful coup. Clearly, the Eisenhower-Nixon administration did not want a progressive American like my father present in that country as they sought to overthrow Sukarno. But biding their time, the CIA was key in engineering the final coup of October 1965, when one to two million Indonesians were massacred. From 1957 on, my father's health disintegrated. He was anxious and fearful of possible FBI blacklisting, professional ruin, and legal battles. 
He developed ulcers that turned into stomach cancer and died in late 1964, exactly one year before the final overthrow in 1965 of Sukarno and the installation of the murderous regime of General Suharto. An estimated one to two million were killed. The rivers were choked with bodies so that boats could not even navigate. Tens of thousands were imprisoned under barbaric conditions, some for decades. The terror was not just political and not only against communists, but it, against all who resisted the dictatorship. Economic, ethnic, and religious divides fueled the oppression as well. Resource-rich Indonesia was literally carved up and opened for Western plunder at a November 1967 summit in Geneva, Switzerland of the world's richest corporations and banks. Fear dominates Indonesia to this day, powerfully shown in two recent Oscar-nominated documentary films by Joshua Oppenheimer and in a 2020 book by Vincent Bivens titled, quote, The Jakarta Method, Washington's Anti-Communist Crusade and the Mass Murder Program that Shapes Our World, unquote. Jakarta is Indonesia's capital. Thank you, Nadia, for your testimony. It will be submitted into the record. Thank you very much. Thank you.